Uh, I'm just going to talk to you this morning about languages, because I am big fan of languages, and I know lots of you are as well. Some of you might occasionally question, well, why do I learn different languages? What's, why are they so important? What's the point? So I'm going to shed some light on that piece today. Hopefully, give you a few facts for you to take away um, and absorb today. So as you can see, on the screen, there's already lots of different ways of saying, I'm sorry, I don't understand what you're saying in different languages. Now, when you look at that, some of them, you might know what they mean, you might know what some of these mean. Um, others of you might be able to read, sort of, you might be able to piece together how it sounds from looking at those letters. However, some of those things you probably won't be able to pronounce at all. So, for example, when I look at Korean and Japanese, I don't speak Korean or Japanese, I look at those, but I don't even know how to start pronouncing those. Okay, whereas um, if I look at Dutch, I might have to go, sorry, I kind of know how to pronounce it, I don't know what it necessarily means. Um, so already from this group, hopefully because there's quite different degrees of understanding of language. Um, and perhaps it might be the last one that you actually fully understand when you read it. Um, so today we're going to talk about a few different things. Here are a few questions that I'm hoping we can answer. Um, where did language actually come from? You might have thought of this. When um, humans first evolved um, and started communicating, why did it evolve into all these different languages? Um, why they're important, as I've already mentioned, is going to be a big question. And lots of other language factors to take away to see how many you can remember as we go through. So, my first question for you. You don't want to have a guess on this question. How many languages are there in the world? You don't want to have a guess. You might know. You don't want to have a guess. How many languages are there in the world? Let's have some guesses. Yes. A hundred, okay. What do we think? Any other guesses? 500 maybe, so we're going up, so it could be 100, it could be 500, what do you think of it here? 530. 530, okay, we're still going up slightly, yes? 500, 570. Okay, we're quite fixing the 500s, can we stick to the 500? It's more, if it's less, what do you think, yeah? 2000, we're going up, we're going up, 2000, it's like, a, it's like bidding, isn't it? Um, any more? Yeah? Twenty-four languages, you're going down, okay, good, okay, you're going a different way. Twenty-four languages in the world, so somewhere between twenty-four and two thousand, I think we're on. Um, yes? Two hundred and ten. Two hundred and ten, quite specific. Hundred and twenty, alright, it's hands down, hands down. Um, it is in fact more than the highest answer we have. There are 7,117 languages, I'd like to say, we think, we think. Okay, we don't even necessarily know exactly. We think there are 7,107 languages, and that was as of 2020. So already it's a slight amount of day. That was the last time there was a big survey. Okay, so that really might raise some questions of how many languages have we got the answer as well? Um, and you might be just to know that 86% of those 7,107 languages are actually Asian and European languages. Okay, so um, most of the languages in the world are spoken in Asia and Europe, but there are still more out there. There's still 14% that are spoken outside um, those countries, or outside originally from those countries. So, for example, you know, Australia is not in Asia or Europe, but Australia is only language to English, so it still originates from Europe. Okay, so, the question might be then, what are the top five world languages? Okay, so firstly, by the total number of speakers, um, those people can speak as a first or second language. They want to go, which think is the top language, first and second language? So there's slightly different statistics what you might see elsewhere. Uh, yes? Do we think English is first? You are right. So English is actually the most spoken language in the world. It's not necessarily the, the first, um, first language, but there are lots of people in the world who can speak as either first or second language. So, um, 1.1 32 billion people now. I suppose the next question is how many billion people are there in the world? How many billion do we know? Approximately, again, I don't know exact number. Yeah? About 8 billion, yes, of course, 8 billion now, sort of 7 and a half, I think. Um, so actually, it's only about sort of 1 in 7 or 8 people that speak English in the world. So already you're isolating in a group of 7 or 8, 6 or 7 people in any conversation if you're only speaking English. That's crazy, that's crazy. So don't ask about that as well, it's only 1.1. Um, billion. Um, number two is Mandarin. Uh, Mandarin Chinese, one of the Chinese languages. Um, I think you've had your taste lesson in Mandarin. Have you had that? Yes, excellent. So you've already got a flavour of Mandarin. It's one of the languages you can do in year seven um, if you choose to. So that's an option. Again, that's 1.117 1 
elite. So again, it's still not people, but still only a portion of the world. Um, the next is Hindi. It's about half. It's from the Indian, or well, that is the British, it's from Indian Hindi. Um, number four is Spanish. You all speak Spanish. That's very useful. Um, 534 million. Even though that's a bit of a lower number, it's actually one of the most widespread languages, as you'll know. Spoken in Spain originally, it's travelled to South America, um, to the Americas as well, and in Africa. And fifth is French. Again, you had your French taste for medicine? Yes, good. So also French is one language you say in year seven. So Mandarin, Spanish, and French. You can see why we study those. Okay, now here's quite a, a sad statistic. There are at least 46 languages in the world, so of those 7,170, there's 46 at least, and there's only one speaker remaining. Okay, so languages do sadly die out over time, and these ones eventually will probably die out because there's only one person that can speak this older language. Um, so languages do change um, over time, they do die out from the ones that have very much a bit like biology, you learn about biology, um, evolution, you learn about animals that go extinct, new animals um, that rise up, it's very similar languages. Um, so, you might be thinking, well hang on, if I'm looking at that, I speak English, so why should I care? Well, I'm very lucky, I only speak English the most dominant language in the world, so why should I care about learning other languages. Well, as we've already said, by native speakers, English is actually only the third most spoken language in the world. There are more people that speak Spanish or Mandarin as their first language. So it's not actually quite the lead table we've got here. There are more people that speak Mandarin Spanish as their main language than English. Okay? We already discussed that if you only really know English, you can only speak to one in seven people in the world. Um, that's another reason. But also the subtlety of language. You will know from your English lessons, studying poetry and reading stories. If you know the finer details of a language, you can really enjoy it much more from an artistic point of view. Okay, so the subtlety of language. If you learn Spanish fluently, you can read Spanish literature, understand all of their wonderful works of art as well. Okay, so we'll explore a few other, other things about languages. Um, here's another language fact for you. Um, or in fact, two language facts. Now, do any of you have this problem when you're writing these three words? Does this have a card? No, lots of shaking, shake hands. No, we don't have this problem. We don't have the problem of mixing these up. Uh, I bet on occasion, occasion, you know, if you're writing very fast or typing or texting or something, you might sometimes slip between those three words. Also, you can things like autocorrect that doesn't always quite work. I certainly don't know how to put those words incorrectly. Do you know this at all when these words, you've got three words or two words that Sound the same, just spell differently, have different meanings? You don't know? You thought you knew? You sure? Does anyone know? Yeah, absolutely. Good. So you, you said one of us would go with a minute. It's, it's a homophone, it's a type of one of these. Um, these are called homophonics. You'll, you'll write as well. So I'll talk specifically about that in a moment. So these are homophonics. Okay, I'll talk about what that means in a second. And specifically, as you said, these are homophones. So these are words which sound the same but have different meaning, and they might also have a different spelling. So homophones, I think you might have heard those um, words before. Um, now this word in itself is interesting, homophones, where does that come from? Well it comes from Greek. It comes from Greek. We're listening to that? We're listening to that? Listen to all these facts. Um, it comes from Greek. Homo means the same, and phone means voice. Okay, so what do you think homophone means? Homophone means the same voice. What do you think a telephone means? Phone means voice. Any guesses? Yeah. Say what, what, what does telephone, what does it originate from? So it's a, it's a, telephone is a relatively new word in the history of languages. They didn't exist hundreds of years ago. So what do you think tele and phone actually mean in that context? Yeah, really, really close. Good. So tele, tele is anything to do with far away. And phone is to the voice. So a telephone is going to transport your voice far away. Can you think of any other words that begin with tele in English um, that might have a similar concept? Yeah? Television. So that is watching something. That's vision of something that's far away or transported far away. Very good. So already you're going to analyse some of these words and see their origins. And there are other types of words as well. Uh, holograms. Can you have these? Homographs, so different types of common like homographs. Now these are words that are written or spelled the same, but they have different meanings. Um, here are some examples. 
permit. You might have to get a parking permit if you park somewhere. Or you might permit someone to do something. You heard that one? Like allow them to do something. Now that's spelled the same way. Actually, two different means. A permit and permit. Um, you might have a present. You might have a present. You might give someone a present. They get a present. Or you might present something to someone. It's spelled the same way. So those are homographs. Um, and it comes from honor again, and then grapho means to write. Again, can you think of any of the English words? Grapho is with writing. Yeah. <coughs> yeah, good. Graphic or graphics. What are graphics? Yeah, yeah. It's some, of the, some of these words are hard to define. So, yeah, graphics. Um, this is doing drawing and designing things. Um, you can have graphic logos and things. Um, you can have. Um, what's his name? Yeah, that. So, yeah, very good. So, a photograph, good, is something that is drawn or written out of using light. Very good, photograph. Um, good picture, is it there? Absolutely. Um, now, um, over time, that's, that's a bad speed, but over time we've lost um, uh, the W sound. We lost the W sound. In some, in some words. Um, so the word for two, I'm just explaining where two came from. So two W T W A might have thought, why is there a what in that? You say two. Well over time in the English language we've lost the what sound. So it used to be twoo. You used to say twoo. A bit weird, right? Twoo. But that's quite difficult to pronounce over again. You keep saying twoo, 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 twoo. You keep trying to do it. So say twoo, 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 twoo. And eventually, eventually, you keep doing it, it'll just become two. Because your mouth will say, that's too, that's too difficult. I'm just going to go straight to two. I'm just going to go straight to two. Um, so the twabit, to do, with, to do with the number two, does exist in a few words still. So have a look at these words. Twin. Is it doing that you have two times? Between. If you are between something, you are between two things. Tweezers. What tweezers? They've got like two, two little big things, haven't they? Tweezers. Twenty. Okay, it's two sets of ten. Twix! I like Twix. You like Twixes? I prefer twirls actually. So Twix and twirls, they kind of practice two, don't they? That's the whole point, they kind of practice two. T W O. But they in kept the W sound, whereas the, the number two, unfortunately, over time, has lost the work and has therefore become very similar to these two words. Um, so there you go, that's, that's a fact, that's a little fact for you. But let's revisit, let's revisit. Um, where the language actually come from? We pose this question at the start. Where they actually come from? Um, so, there are three theories. We don't know the answer, by the way. There are three theories. Here are the names of the theories. They've got quite funny names. Bow Wow, <laughs> Ding Dong, <laughs> and maybe, maybe the funniest of all of them, Poo Poo. <laughs> of the theories how languages evolve. Um, so one of them, what are the bits to do with when animals are first when you see animals out in the wild? They make sounds, don't they? They communicate with each other, they make sounds. Um, and those different sounds are geared towards what they want to do. So that's the, that's the first idea. The power idea is that you, we're all purely just animals making sounds and over time we've registered that sound equals that. Okay, there's a ding-dong theory. Now, the ding-dong theory is the theory that actually, when we're born, we're already hardwired with all of the sounds in our brain. And actually, subconsciously, we already know what different sounds are going to mean for different things. And we have to unlock them as we get older. So that's one theory. And then there's the poo-poo theory, which is a combination of the two. It's about unlocking certain patterns in our brains, but also responding to them in different places in the world. Hence, we have different languages. If you grow up in a different part of the world, you'll have learned different words and different things. Okay? Now, we could talk about that for the whole the rest of the session. We don't really have time. But those are three theories, and scholars, you know, people at universities, they still debate this. They still debate how we can speak our languages. What do you think of this thing? Only humans can speak. What do you think? Hands up, anyone want to share their thoughts? So not just yes or no, but why do you think what do you think? Uh, only humans can speak, yes. Uh, what else speak to Parrots can also speak. Parrots. Good. Yeah. So parrots can also speak. Is that right? Can parrots speak? Yes. Yes. Can they speak? 
I'm, I'm, I'm not disagreeing with you, I'm just interested. We, anyone elaborate on that? So compare it to speak. Compare it to speak, yeah. Yes? Okay, good. So we could say, actually, we, in some ways, we've been taking some sounds from animals that could be their language. So animals speak. Does anyone think, do anyone agree with this? Humans can, only humans can speak. No, okay, yeah? No, there's, um, so, some animals can as well speak like parrots and, and they could sometimes memorize what... Yeah, what very good, very good. So, uh, you're right. We're on the same thinking. So birds, perhaps. We know birds do bird songs. You can hear it in the morning. You can hear it this morning, in fact. You know, birds chirping, making noises. Is that speak? Are they communicating with each other, or does it serve a different purpose? Again, don't find the answer. Now, parrots. Now, parrots, we know, can repeat phrases. They can replicate the sounds that a human makes. Does that count as speech? If you copy someone else, if you haven't thought about yourself, does that count as speech? Maybe it does, maybe it doesn't. Um, Here's a ticket astronomer that said this. He says, um, this is just one theory, by the way. It seems three things are needed for a creature to speak like a human. Okay, they need a human's brain, a human's vocal cords, and a human's intelligence. Okay? That's just one scholar's view, but this is an argument that actually only humans can speak. Because you need the brain processing power, you need the actual power of the vocal cords, and you need the level of intelligence. Okay, but I like to think of the idea that parrots and birds might speak as well. And what's going on in here? Um, I'll show you another picture. Grammar, we all like grammar, don't we? Grammar's really fun in the language. Oh, that's a shame in there. Um, but recent studies argue that birds use grammar and syntax. Birds actually have grammar, this is what scientists have found. There's another animal as well that definitely have their own vocabulary. Dolphins. It has been found that dolphins are actually using different words when they are speaking to one another. It's um, quite a limited vocabulary. They do have different words, but they use to mean different things. We know dolphins are very intelligent, but actually they use grammar. Okay? They use endings, they use different ways of forming their sentences. If dolphins can do it, then you should definitely as well. Okay, so I'm just going to ask a couple of more questions because then I know you need to go back to your lessons. But the question still might arise, why don't we all just speak the same language? Okay, so one of you I understand a bit more about why languages exist, why don't we all speak the same one? Well, let me give you another example. So by the time you speak, um, humans have a speech, they were already spread across the world. Okay, you'll know a lot about um, history and how the world split apart and and the continents formed, but by the time that humans had evolved, they were already spread across the world and couldn't interact with each other. It's only relatively recent history when you could sail across or fly across, you could meet other people across the world. So they're already divided across the world. Now, what we need to create a new language is three different ingredients. Okay, here's the recipe for making a language. You need time. You need time for people to look at things and go, whiteboard, piano, tree and build up that vocabulary and share it amongst people. That's the first ingredient. The second ingredient is you need distance. Okay, you need distance from other people so you don't get influenced by their language. So you can be quite isolated actually. So you need time and distance. And you need the process of language change. Now what does that mean? Um, so that means something like we've got a laptop here. Okay, the word laptop didn't exist 50 years ago. No need for it, it doesn't exist, it's not like it exists. So over time, words have developed, they, they developed this word laptop, probably because it can sit on your lap, you can open it, open its top up, and probably like to call it laptop. But you need to be in a system where words can change, okay, for a language to develop. Um, so let's do another experiment. Let's say when you go into um, year seven, let's say you go to four different form groups, we spread you out, you go to four different form groups in year seven, let's call you A, B, C, and D, for example. Okay? And let's say, we're not going to do this, but let's say we isolated you from each other for a whole year. You never saw the other form groups at all. So A, B, C, and D. Now let's say lots of new technology comes along in that year. But you're responsible, your form, for naming it. So group A might call, uh, I don't know, a new, let's say this, let's say this is a new, this is a new type of phone. It's a new type of phone. Um, group A calls it a wiggle. Group A calls it a wiggle. Uh, group B calls it a bibble. Group C calls it um, a cat. Group 
D calls it dog. Okay? Now you've all given a different names and you haven't seen each other and you've started using it for a whole year that word. Right, let's, let's now pretend that the year after you get mixed up. Okay? And some of you in group A goes group D, some of you in group B goes group A, da, 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 you all change. So now you've got someone who potentially has the word cat and the word bibble to mean this item. How you decide what it's called? Well, you might merge your words together, or you might wipe out the one that's less popular. Okay, but then, the other group, where they've got dog and... I don't know what of course. Wiggle. Yeah, dog and wiggle. They've got to decide what the word is between them. Now, let's say to year nine, you move again. Now you've got combinations of dog and wiggle and wiggle and cat, and all the words in between. You have to decide what this item is called. And as you spread this across the world, different words evolve. I hope that makes sense in a very, very brief example. But that's how languages change. And the more people spread out, the more people move around the world, the more languages change as well. Hence, we have over 7,000 languages. Uh, so, for example, um, you will say Latin in year six. The Latin comes from the Roman Empire, spreads one, far and wide, and then it fell. The Roman Empire fell, so Latin isn't a spoken language anymore. But Latin evolved into French and Spanish and Italian and Portuguese in a very, very similar way. It all starts in one place, and France went off in group A, Spain went off in group B, Italy group C, Portugal group D, and the languages evolved from there. Okay, the last thing I'm going to tell you is a few things, because you are doing Latin, I'm going to give you a few Latin and Greek influence words in English for you to take away. Now, have you heard this word derivatives? No, no yes, I've heard some yes answers to those. So derivatives is a good word for you to take away, you didn't really know it, are words which come directly from another language. So something can derive from Latin. Okay, so just like we talked about um, the word uh, homophone, homophone derives from Greek. Okay, so we're going to talk about tele, television, um, comes from Greek and Latin. Okay, it's two words. Telos means far away, and wissi means seas. This is actually television is an English word that we came up with, but we made it up half from Greek and half from Latin. And the same thing happened with telephone. Okay, you already know one of those, so let's have a few more uh, examples. So, Latin has many different words for stars. Okay? It's got two words, it's got aster and it's got sinus. Now, aster is also a Greek word. So, Latin has two different words for stars. Now, let's have a look how this word for star has spread into the English language. This is the last set of facts I'm going to give you before we go. Uh, the first word is disaster. Disaster. You might not think the word disaster has anything to do with the stars, but it does. Disaster literally means an ill star event, okay, like a badly star event. So dis, this means is a negative thing. Disaster. So the, the aster bit of disaster is means a star. Um, you might this one might be more obvious. An asterisk. What's an asterisk? Can you use an asterisk in your writing? Maybe you miss something out of an asterisk and you go and write it off the page and you do that? Yeah, because it's an asterisk. It's like a little star, isn't it? You literally put a little star next to your work. The aster bit of asterisk means a star. Okay, that makes more sense. Right, this one. Astronauts. Well, that makes sense. Astronauts go into space. Um, and the word nautar, the nautar bit, means a sailor. I was saying that's quite a lovely word. So an astronaut literally means a star sailor. A sailor amongst the stars. Uh -huh. Okay, just a couple more. Um, consider this word. Consider. Okay, we're now looking at the sinus bit, which means a star. If you consider something, what you're actually doing, look at this quite nice idea, if you're considering something, you're looking up to the stars and you're thinking. That's what we did when you consider. So the sida bit, consider, means to observe the stars. And then the last one, the last one, is slightly different, desire. If you desire something, you wish it upon a star. Now you might say, hang on, Mr. Asan, you're cheating there a bit, because that doesn't have the sinus bit in it, it has S I R E. Well, you are spot on, but actually, what I can just also do, a bit like how we lost the work from two, um, this originally came from desidere. Okay, so you see, you see, you see, the D eventually disappears, and you get desire. So the D has disappeared over time, you do find there's lots of words, but some letters, they just disappear, we don't need them. Um, particularly in English, we don't like too many consonants there, so they disappear. Um, so there you go. That is a few facts for you. I hope that gives you a bit of flavour of 
why languages are so important. Um, and as you move into year seven, you study in addition to your Spanish, you French, your Mandarin, and Karen, your Latin. Again, hopefully you can appreciate how it all serves a great purpose for English and for learning languages uh, more generally.